Hi, this is Paul at the Mission Bay Aquatic Center. You know, fuel systems on outboard motors can be a source of a lot of headaches for boat owners, um, especially if you don't run your motor very often. That's actually what I've got right here. This is uh, my motor that I've got here in my garage at home. I haven't run this thing in over three years and I need to give the fuel system a good going through because it doesn't start and run right now. So let's go through this thing, let's troubleshoot it. Let's see if we can get it to run. Let's actually start with just a really quick rundown on the entire fuel system on this motor so we know what we're dealing with. Now, this is an old outboard. It's from 1989. It's an old two-stroke outboard. Even though it's pretty old technology, everything we're going to talk about um, is going to look very similar on pretty much any carbureted outboard engine. Starting with the whole fuel system, we have down here in the boat the portable fuel tank. That's where our fuel is stored. Um, that's connected to the motor with a fuel line. In the middle of the fuel line here, we have this black bulb. It's a primer bulb, and that's what we use to actually pre-prime the fuel system and deliver fuel up to it before we try and start the motor. Fuel line connects to the motor right here in the front. It's a little bit harder to track where exactly it goes, but there's a fuel line that connects uh, to the fuel line on the outside. There's a fuel line on the inside that connects up here to the fuel filter. This is an onboard fuel filter. Fuel filter is then connected to the fuel pump. It's a mechanically driven fuel pump that's actually delivering the fuel to the carburetor. The carburetor is underneath this black piece of plastic right here. Um, this is where the air gets mixed with the fuel and ultimately delivered into the combustion chamber to be burned by the engine to, to generate power. So troubleshooting this thing, why doesn't it run and where are we gonna start? Um, I can pretty much guarantee that the problem is with the fuel system because this motor was running really well the last time that I took it out. Um, and now I've let it sit for a really long period of time and now it doesn't start and run. As long as I know the history of it and I know it was running well before I parked it and it doesn't run now, I'm guessing that's the problem with the fuel system because fuel does go bad over time. Um, now the first thing that I've done is I put fresh fuel in the gas tank. I had an empty gas tank, put fresh gas in it so I know I'm not dealing with old stale gas that's uh, gonna just cause me more problems if I try and continue to use it. Um, so starting with fresh gas, um, I'm gonna go through the entire fuel system. I'm gonna try and get this fuel filter apart. It does have a, a, a cleanable element in it. Um, these are sometimes really hard to get apart. I'm gonna see if I can get it apart, clean the element in it so that I know that any contaminants there are gone. Um, we're gonna kind of flush fresh gas through the entire fuel lines to get rid of all the old gas. And then I don't even know if it's required or not, but I am going to rebuild the carburetor. I happen to have a, a carburetor rebuild for this kit thing here in my garage, so might as well use it, show you guys the carburetor. Um, plus there's a chance that there's uh, passageways that are clogged by letting that fuel sit in there for so long. So we'll go through that whole system, see if it runs after that. I'm also going to add a big external fuel filter water separator for the fuel system in this boat. Just adding that to any outboard motor will help alleviate some of the fuel problems you're going to see. Um, so let's get started. Let's start taking some stuff apart and, uh, and get it running. Removing the carburetor from most small outboards is a really straightforward process. Just make sure you're paying attention to everything as you're taking apart. Pay attention to how everything is connected. Keep track of all your fasteners. I always have a workspace set aside that I can set things down um, as I'm working. Sometimes access is a bit of a challenge. Um, if you have to take off more parts to get at one of the fasteners, it's often easiest just to take those parts off um, to, make, uh, to make access a lot easier to get what you're, what you're after. Again, just make sure you're working really, really clean, really methodical. If you think you're gonna have trouble understanding how things go back together, it's always great to take a, a couple pictures as you go along. That especially is helpful with any linkages, how anything that the throttle and or the choke connect to the carburetor so you can remember how they go back together. Carburetor's off. Um, now I'm pumping fresh fuel through the entire fuel system, flushing all the old fuel out. That fuel looks really dark because this is a two-stroke motor that uses pre-mixed fuel, so there's oil in there. There's the fuel filter coming off. It just basically pops off with a couple of hoses. Okay, so I have off the carburetor and the fuel filter. I also uh, pumped clean gas through all the fuel lines. So now all the old gas is gone. Um, I did have to kind of stumble my way through that. I'd never taken this carburetor off before. Um, I had to take the starter off uh, in order to get out one of the mounting bolts for the carburetor. I probably could have done it without taking that off, but my experience with pretty much working on boats, if it looks like something's in the way, it's often easiest just to take it off and get it out of the way instead of trying to struggle into really small spaces to deal with fasteners and be dropping nuts and bolts and that kind of a thing. 
So now uh, I'm going to tear down the carburetor. Um, carburetors are a little intimidating to people. Um, I think a lot of people are reluctant to open one up and, and do a rebuild on it. Um, I'm not going to get into the specifics of this specific carburetor that much. I'm just going to walk through it really quick. Um, you know, just if you work really organized and really cleanly, um, I've taken everything apart. I've got everything organized. I know where all my fasteners are. Um, I'm going to wait till I get the carburetor all the way apart before I get out my rebuild kit see what parts I'm going to replace in it. I'm going to use some carburetor cleaner, clean everything out really good, blow everything out with some compressed air, reassemble it, um, and then get it back on the motor. Now taking the carburetor apart, again, there's a couple of key things here. One is make sure you have a really clean work surface that uh, you can keep track of all of your screws and all the bits that you're taking off the motor as you go. Also, make sure you're using the correct screwdriver. Um, you really don't want to strip any of the fasteners as you're taking the carburetor apart because it's just going to create more work for yourself. So make sure you're using all the right, all the right screwdrivers, um, not, not using a screwdriver that's too small or too big and doesn't fit anything and it's going to make it more likely for you to strip that fastener. Really methodically, just look the carburetor over, take apart basically everything that you can take apart and set it aside. Uh, again, don't throw anything away. Keep it nice and neat. Even though if you have a carburetor rebuild kit, you don't always know exactly what parts are going to be in the rebuild kit. So I like to disassemble the carburetor first, lay all my parts out before I get the rebuild kit out and before I throw anything away for sure. The fuel filter, that fuel filter, sometimes those are really hard to get apart. That one came apart, no problem. Here we're spraying carburetor cleaner through all of the passageways. Again, look the carburetor over, track the fuel flow through the carburetor and, and methodically blow everything out with the carb cleaner. Um, also off scene here, I didn't, I didn't film it. Um, I blew out all the passageways also with, with compressed air once I was done blowing that with carburetor cleaner. The compressed air is a pretty important step, just blows everything out. Again, make sure you're working really, really clean. Putting the carburetor back together, uh, if you kept your work surface really, really clean and your parts organized, it's usually really, really easy. Again, don't mix up your old and new parts. Um, as I get out the new parts, any new part I use, I'm taking the equivalent old part and setting it aside into a pile so I know that I don't have to worry about that part going back in. So I have all the parts out in front of me. I know exactly what has to go back into the carburetor. Again, tightening all the fasteners, make sure you're using all the proper screwdrivers. You're paying really close attention to not strip any of the fasteners. The fuel filter goes back to together really simply, it just screws back together. Make sure the O-ring that's there is in really good shape. Last thing there is the electronic choke going back on. Again, just giving the, the whole carburetor a good look over. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Readjusting everything back to where it was. And we're ready to go back on the motor. Putting the fuel filter back on uh, is simply a matter of connecting the hoses back to it. Pay attention to which hose goes where. That fuel filter is labeled in and out, so just make sure you're collecting it the right way. Reassembling the carburetor onto the motor is just going to be the opposite process of taking it apart, putting it back on, um, and now we're just reassembling all the parts that we had to take off to get access to that one fastener to get the carburetor back off. Again, uh, refer back to any photos that you took if you're having trouble remembering how anything went, and there it is. It's all back together. Now we're adding the, the big external fuel filter water separator. This is just good practice on pretty much any outboard motor these days um, because of the ethanol content in fuel. Having something like this will really help you with your fuel problems if you're seeing fuel problems in your boat. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, we've gone through the whole fuel system. Uh, we've uh, flushed out all of the old fuel that might have been in this fuel system. Uh, we've cleaned the element in this filter. We've added a larger capacity filter as well as a water separator, and we've rebuilt the carburetor. Uh, last thing for us to do now is we're going to push this boat outside, hook it up to some water, see if it starts and runs. Let's see how we did. All right, let's start it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is come back here, we're going to pump the primer bulb. It's probably going to take a little bit because we've got to pump fuel all the way back up through this system, refill up uh, this new uh, filter that we've added on here. So uh, this is going to take a little bit of pumping. Uh, any primer bulb, you know it's ready, you just pump it until it gets firm and then it's ready to go. Alright, that's firm, that's ready to go. I'm going to walk up there and see if it starts.
All right, that's it. We fixed it. That's a really common uh, thing to do to a motor that's been sitting for a really long time is to go through that sequence and uh, clear up the fuel system and you'll be running again. Uh, I was just watching it there to make sure nothing that we did uh, was leaking fuel. So we're good to go. This thing's just about ready to get in the water.